podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding, most dedicated wife in the world, <laughs> Miss Jamaica. <laughs> Let's go. Well, go on, you know, my dad. But let me tell y'all, y'all need to stop what you're doing. Like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. When I mean everything, everything, including Patreon, because that's where we're going to have our full-length interviews on our Patreon channel and on our YouTube membership. Y'all love what we do. We've been doing this for a while. I know y'all loving it. If y'all just getting on, well, thank you so much. And we love y'all. Man, you know, let's be real for a second, guys. We got a special guest in here today. Like I said, she is uh, currently residing in Florida, the state of Florida, but by way of Chicago, Illinois, the south side of Chicago, uh, is stumped down. She over at a Harold's Chicken somewhere. <laughs> Listen, man, check it, man. Hey, man, Goddess Johnson is in the building. Yes. Yeah, you ain't got no introduction like that no way. <laughs> See, it didn't happen like that. That's right. That's right. Man, thank you for coming on the show, man. Man, thank you both for having me. I'm com I'm truly honored to be here. Thank you so much. Well, before we get started, because I know Mr. Jamaica want to get into it, I don't want you to feel like you by yourself. Let me let me just show you what. You ain't the only one got a crown. You know what I'm saying? I got a crown right here. I can't really keep it on because I had to do the mic like this. Hey, hey, hey. But at loud. the end of the day, I, I, I just want you to know you ain't the only one in here with a crown. Cocked uh, off the side of his yeah, head. Yeah, and it's cocked. Right. You think I'm T.I. the way right. I got this thing cocked. You better go You know ahead. what I'm saying? Check it, man. Let me quit playing. Let's Absolutely. get down to the business, man, at hand. Man. So, okay. Um, Goddess Johnson, man. Like I said, I was so amazed to uh, read uh, your bio and understand, you know, the trials and tribulations that you faced and then God still be here with you like yes. he is. I just want to say thank you, first of all, for keeping on pushing on. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's very important because a lot of people that have, have been through a lot sometimes give up or can't make it through. Right. And you made it through. And not only did you made it through, you made it through with class. Yes. And I thank God for you. And so we wanted to uh, get into your story. We're glad that you're in Dallas and uh, we wanted to talk to you, really show you some love. Uh, uh, the Boss Talk 101 way, man. It's yeah. going down today. I hope you enjoy the show. Yes. I, you got this blue on. We cripping today. <laughs> it's going down, man. Hey, man. Listen, man. Show God is Johnson some love. Make sure you got like, subscribe, follow her pages, man. We about to get in her story. You guys are about to be amazed, man. Let's go. So, okay. First of all, um, when I hear the name Goddess Johnson, first thing I ask, I'm like, is Goddess your real name? <laughs> like, for real? Yes. Goddess is my real name, and I get that question all of the time. And um, then people, they follow up and be like, well, I, I mean, I'll be like, well, I didn't have no choice in the matter, you know, but yes. That so you ever ask your mama when you were a kid? I actually, I was never, ever really able to ask my mom how I came about with my name. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really know the significance behind it um but i do i did find out a little bit later in life through asking um an aunt who actually found me on facebook mm -hmm. um, what i was told is that my biological father was into kind of greek mythology right and um like goddess of this and normally a goddess is spelled g-o-d-d-e-s-s -S. right and he wanted to have i guess some originality to mm -hmm. it so I added the t so that's kind of like the most I, I've been given about that. Wow. Yes. Did you used to get teased as a kid growing up? Girl, all the time. <laughs> I got all the God is good, God is great, all the little <laughs> stuff, you know, and things like that. And, um, you know, the little jokes people make. And then I used to be like, well, that ain't my name because my name is not Goddess. You know what I'm saying? It's Goddess. To so right. say it right. But yeah. So did it, you hate it? Growing up, or I mean, did you always accept it? I always kind of, I, I was different regardless, you know what I'm saying? So that was just like the kind of uniqueness that came along with mm -hmm. it. You know, later on in life when you tell people that's your name and then they follow out where, are you a stripper? I mean, like, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. No, she's no, not. I it would be <laughs> Lexus, Strawberry. Mercedes. Mercedes. <laughs> yeah, don't come at her for that because Goddess is not just up yeah. in there like that. I've been to one or two. And um, I didn't see no Goddesses yeah. up in there. So, you good. And you're the first, you're the only person with that name? Have you ever met another person with that name? I have never ne met anyone else with my name, no. Wow. Mm hmm. That, that's unique in itself. Yes. I love it. So, okay, raised in Chicago, mm -hmm. um, as a kid growing up, you did know your mom as a kid growing up, like young, young, young kid, mm -hmm. right? 
so kind of I knew my, so with my mom my mom was uh, my mom was in my life until I was seven years right old. that's what yes. I said as a kid mm-hmm. up to seven mm-hmm. so but at that time you didn't know who your father was no my father wasn't a part of my life during that time no and no one told you who he was at that no. time okay um and from what I understand, your mom had mental mental health issues as well. Correct. So, but at seven, do you remember anything about that? Do you remember her mood swings, how oh, she man. would act, all yes. of that? Tell I, me about some of that. Man, um, I always knew my mom was different. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, my mom would be, I remember sometimes my mom would be real happy, and then sometimes she would be like really, really down. Mm. You know, she was never ever really the same and then there were times i remember significantly um i would i I remember one time when i was coming i came home i think i was in like the first grade and my mom um the house smelled like gas Mm. um in the house and I, i was walking walking through the house and I went went in the kitchen and my mom was on the floor, mm-hmm. you know. So turning off the gas, trying to get my mom up, things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom was never just normal, you know what I'm saying? To right. me, I didn't know what, you know. You she would just have instances where sometimes she'd be just start yelling out of nowhere, you know. And then my mom, not knowing then what I know now. She also had personality disorders. So it was, because when you're saying all of that, the first thing that comes to my mind is bipolarism. Yes. But, you know, back then, people didn't try to label their mm-hmm. kids. They don't want to get them help because it's like, I don't want you to end up in a mental health institution. Right. I don't want people to think that you're crazy, mm-hmm. all sorts of stuff. But had she ever become, um, I know you say you smelt gas, mm-hmm. but the house didn't blow up. No. So have you seen where or... Um, she hurt someone else or tried to hurt herself? My mom used to, um, I, she used to try to hurt, hurt herself quite a few times, you know. So um, it was a couple of times, you know, you always have that child. No matter what, my mom was like, I was always wanted to be under my mom. Mm. It didn't matter about even if it was something negative. Um, my mom, she was abusive, you know. She would. Towards you? Towards, yes. And the children? And my other Are you the sisters. oldest? I'm not. <laughs> okay, cause I know there's four of y'all. Yes. So where did you fall? So I fell in the middle. Okay. Yes, but, you know, I was always that child that tried to stand up and do everything, you know, because I always wanted to be, you know, recognized, I guess you can mm-hmm. say, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But, um, so with my mom, I witnessed her do that. You know, she had times where, of course, she was abusive, and then there was a lot of men that came in and out, you mm. know. So um, witnessing them, they weren't that great to my mom either, you know what I'm saying? So it was that, that was the environment mm-hmm. um, that was growing up. And then from being in the projects, you know, it wasn't, you know, too much different because a lot of times, you know, we struggled with things, you know, not having. And, and you see it a lot, not mm-hmm. only in your household, but when you went to your friend's household, Correct. you saw the same thing. So it wasn't anything abnormal, abnormal at your household. Right. And um, she was also on drugs, right? Correct. So um, growing up, seeing all of this, because my philosophy is like, a lot of people always, you know, a lot of people that sit in that same seat, it's all that's how they were raised. Mm-hmm. And But you have the few who say, but I didn't end up, selling drugs on the street. I didn't end up taking drugs. I didn't end up beating women. I didn't end up elevated from that situation because I didn't want to be like that. Yes. But the majority end up straight on the street doing all, mm-hmm. of, all of the same things they didn't want to do, but they ended up doing it because that was their environment. Right. So what makes a person different by not doing that? Because I always like, if one person can do it and come up and get out, everybody can do it. Mm-hmm. It's just, do you want to do it? Right. Do you believe that? I I believe it's a choice, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, I always, you know, for me, it's like my your response is your own responsibility to anything. Right. You know, and it does take a determination and a mindset to want to to, to do differently, you know, which is not, I'm not going to sit up here and lie. It's not something that I, in the beginning, saw that. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I developed that different mentality after the fact. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to go through that time where I did use all that and make a lot of dumb decisions. Okay, you know yeah. what I'm saying? From the pain and the hurt and not feeling, you know, apart or abandoned and alone, I did make not the right decisions, but there came a point where I had to make a choice that, you know what, 
y'all not going to tell me what I can be and what I'm not going to be. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it became a different approach and a different response that I had, which initially started the change for me. But you know, the crazy thing that with kids, because growing up, I'm remembering, and I didn't go through a lot of trauma or anything like that, but at the same time, I can remember as children, we, I tell my daughter all the time, my daughter looks towards the future. She planned mm -hmm. a lot of stuff ahead. I'm like, shoot, I was taking everything one day at a time as mm -hmm. it came. I wasn't thinking about futuristic stuff. You mm -hmm. just took it as, as it is. Yep. So, in, um, so saying that is that kids don't think about, okay, I'm going through this situation. That's the reason mm -hmm. why I'm acting out. Kids are not thinking about that. You're just taking it one step at a time. And as you get older, you look back on your life. It's like, oh, yes. that's why I did what I did because mm -hmm. of what I saw as a child growing up, not realizing that that affects you. Right. But some people grow now, when you ask them, did it affect you? They'll tell you no, but I guarantee you, anything that you go yes. through in life affects you it one does. way or the other. It does. You know what I mean? But some people will tell you, no, mm -mm, it didn't affect me. I was good. <laughs> I didn't miss him in my life. I didn't <coughs> want to know him, you know, as in their father and different stuff. Mm -hmm. But how not having a father in your life and seeing all these different men come in and out of the household yeah. with your mom, how did that affect you? Man, I, I, I'm going to be complete. I'm, I'm a very honest person. <coughs> I literally, for a long time, I had no respect for my mom at all. Mm. I really didn't. I, I watched, you know, I could remember even as an early age, I watched my mom allow men to do something, to talk to her like like crap. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, hit on her. I even, you know, my mom, the, the man that my mom ended up murdering and going to prison for, mm -hmm. this man raped me repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to my mom, telling my mom. And there's nothing worse than you telling your mother something like that and your mom looking at you and telling you you're lying. Mm. And I never forget my mom telling me that and then just total disregard and then mm. having that same man turn around and laugh and say, I told you she wasn't going to believe you. You know, mm. I didn't have no respect for my mom. I thought my mom was weak and I never wanted to be weak like her, you know, and um, even, you know, I never forget the day, you know, like. I felt, you know, they came into the elementary school and we were all brought into the office and, you know, we were all out on the playground and beforehand we were out on the playground and this kid, you know, he was, he was going at it with my brother and he was like, you know what, that's why your mom, you know, your mom, you know, my mom was a stripper. My mom was a prostitute. Mm. It was known in the hood when your mom does certain things, they make sure you know mm. what your mom knew, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then, however... We didn't know what my mom had did, but we found out from this boy saying, you know, that's why your mama in jail. And we looking like, what you talking about? You oh, know what so I'm she was just missing out of your life. Nobody yeah. told you the reason why. No, the last time I, re I remember that night, like it was anything. Um, my mom had got, you know, in her little out, you know, I knew she was going to work, to or work, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And for some reason, I was like telling my mom, like, you know, so can you stay? You know, I'm trying to get my mom to stay stay at home. And, and you were like seven that. at this time. Yes. And my mom was like, I got to go, goddess. I got to go. But for some reason that day, I just, I don't know. And she was like, I got to go, girl. You know, and and my mom didn't come home. I, I used to stay up. You know what I'm saying? To mm -hmm. try to make sure she came home in the morning. My mom didn't get up. My mom didn't ever come, come home. back. You right. know what I'm saying? And then so getting up, getting my brothers and sisters ready for school, you know, we went to school. My mom never showed up, you know, and that was different because my mom always showed up. So when and we went, who was the oldest one at home at the time brother. of your brother? But how old was he? My, bro my brother was on. My brother was two years older than me. Oh, so he was nine at this time. Yes. OK, so but, um, you know, go to school when we was in school and then that happened. And then they got in a fight. You know, my brother ended up fighting with the boy. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. we didn't know what he was talking about. Um, going into the office and then that's when we were told um, what had happened. How mm -hmm. long after she was arrested was this? This literally was that same, the next day. The next, the oh, next they day. already knew that she was arrested and y'all didn't even know We none. didn't know. Wow. You know, we didn't know. But I have another, I have a question because you said you were molested and you went to your mom and mm -hmm. told your mom about it, but how long before seven or how old were you when the molestation started? I was about five. Five, so it went on mm -hmm. for a whole two years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. I just, um, man, that, that's an extraordinary story. I just sat back listening. And, uh, you know, it, it's really a thing where, you know, you, you go through these different situations in life and God 
you know, he's he's with you, you know, and, and these are the times when he's carrying you. Mm-hmm. I just feel like, you know, because you could have been dead. Yes. You could have, the, the house could have burnt up when the gas smell was mm-hmm. there. But God has a plan, an ultimate plan, and that's what puts you on Boss Talk 101 today is because people can look at your story and they can hear your testimony and they can understand how to get through the algorithm of what they're dealing with. And I thank God for you, for you even giving us your story. But I just want to say, you know, um, you know, uh, a lot of times when men and women and all the stuff that you guys are discussing, we start looking at the person. But it's spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. The devil is trying to take you out. He's trying to figure out a way to win. And the way that he wins is to kill, steal, and destroy, as mm-hmm. the word of God explains. So you have to really, really really tap into your spiritual essence as you grow Mm -hmm. and 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 to be seven years old she she had no one but it had to be something so you know it had to be something inside of you that was very very you know strong and stern in order for you to be here today Mm -hmm. you know what i mean as a seven-year-old you just explained to me that you got up and you got your brothers and you got your 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 family ready to go and y'all ended up at school Mm -hmm. regardless of the situation y'all ended up at school that day i don't know how you guys worked that magic but at the end of the day that, that's that's the angel they that's know the, they know the bus they need to get on they know what they gotta they do knew, we knew and, that and they yeah. knew how to grow up so how did how was that morning getting up going to school on your own did somebody stop by to help you guys get no, dressed no i wake up my brothers and sisters got us dressed we made sure we all At got seven. dressed yes and we went out you know we we it was no bus in our neighborhood we walked <laughs> yeah. to school how um, far uh probably equivalent now i went to john foster douglas school from Parkwood, I would say maybe a, I'm going to say maybe like two, it probably was maybe like a 15, 20 minute walk. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And you were always acted like you were the oldest child. Mm-hmm. That's why I kept asking who, how old was your older brother? <laughs> because yeah. you seem like you're the one who's, I, I I'm the one mean. who got him up. Mm-hmm. I'm the one who Well, you got to understand as a little, she had to grow up fast if she's getting molested at mm-hmm. the age of five. Mm-hmm. There are some things happening with her that she don't understand, but at the end of the day, she have to grow up fast yeah. because mm-hmm. she's going through experiences which are traumatic, but at the same time, she has to deal with it. And mm-hmm. to deal with it at five years old to seven, I commend you. Like I said, uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. So when you, when you think about it, you know, you go to school, they mm-hmm. tell you this. Um, now you guys, how do you guys end up, where do you go that day? Do the people come in at that time and take you guys from, you know, and start trying to, you know, split the family or just give me the spiel. So what happened was, um, from that, um, my uncle, I had a, we had an uncle. So where we say my uncle stayed upstairs. Um, so my uncle came and we came back to, they took us back to our place, our, our house, our apartment. And the only thing I remember, I had a grandmother and um, they were trying to decide where we were gonna go. I'll never forget my grandmother when she was asked, it was my grandmother, my uncle, um, and we were in the living room and it was um, the caseworker. And she was like, I I can't take these kids. Um, She shouldn't have did what she did. She could have been out to raise her own kids. Mm. That's what my grandmother said. But there was nowhere for us to go. My uncle didn't wanna take us. So um, my uncle was saying they have a father so given the information so my grandmother agreed to take us um for a, i guess like overnight and stuff so a couple of nights so they could work out finding my father mm-hmm. so that was the original arrangement so one thing like you said it is a spiritual thing and it comes from you know my, what my mom my mom couldn't give what she never had mm-hmm. so my my grandmother and my mother didn't have a good relationship and my grandmother did not show us that saying she displayed that with us Mm. so um she she took us but you know it wasn't like a normal happy-go-lucky thing you know Mm -hmm. so we were there for a little bit they eventually found my father um in the beginning my father was the one who had us my Mm. father took us at first okay so you you eventually met your father knew who he was yes okay my father got us at first he was actually remarried Mm. and living in Chicago living in Chicago okay and we er originally went with him um so the background behind that my father is suffer from mental illness my father was paranoid schizophrenic wow um I have to say that my father um 
didn't get along with my mom. So you have to realize we were taken. My mom did this crime. We were only with my mom. My mom was in Cook County Jail. Um, my father took us. I'll never forget the last time I saw my mom. My father took us to the jail and told my mom he was taking us away from Illinois. And that was going to be the last time she saw us. And how old were you? Um, at this time, I believe I was nine. nine. Okay. Yes. So she, she had been locked up for a few years. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in that time, we hadn't had no communication with my mom because mm -hmm. of everything going on. Nobody took us to see her or anything. So that was the first and last Correct. time. Correct. And so when he told us that, so as you got to understand, I was always close to, to my mom, mom, no matter mm -hmm. what. So when you're telling us that, when you're going in there and you're looking at your mom through a glass window, you can't hug her, you can't touch her, you was not, I didn't want to accept I was never going to see my mom again. So I started cutting up in, in the jail. And I remember falling. Um, they was trying to pull me off the thing. He had to pick me up, and I was screaming because you telling me I'm not going to see my mom no more. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? That's how evil my father was. Mm. Um, we were taken out of school. We were taken. My father was this person who felt like he, the story I don't tell, and I'm telling it for the first time, um, he, want, he had this, wanted to be this expiring musician. Mm -hmm. So my father, to, within this time, my father was, his new wife couldn't stand none of us because we wasn't her kids. Mm. And she made that very well known. She was heavily addicted to cocaine mm. and my father and alcohol. Wow. So they had drugs and alcohol abuse. Um, he took us actually overseas. We weren't in school. Um, we were in like a one, like maybe like equivalent to like a one bedroom, what would be a one bedroom apartment. Um, food, different things we didn't have. Um, why, um, he was very neglectful to us. Do you remember overseas where? We were in Germany. Germany. Okay. We went to Germany. Music, he was trying to pursue a music yeah. career. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we went over to Germany. And um, during within that time, my father was physically and sexually abusive to myself. Mm. Um, wow. He was physically abusive to my brothers and my sister. However, I was the person that I felt like I wanted to protect them. So mm -hmm. I took a lot. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so your father... Again, you go back into yes. the molestation. Uh, now it's not now it's not the outsider; it's the person that you put all your trust Correct. into. Your father ends up now sleeping with you. And mm -hmm. how long did that go on? That went on for about a little over a year and a half. And what happened? How that happened? It came to pass is because it was a uh, we weren't in school at the time that we were over there, and my um, father. Um, we were going to like a, it, there was a tutor that would come and then we ended up getting in school and there was a guy equivalent to what's called a guidance counselor. And I didn't know what a menstrual period was. There was nobody who taught me mm -hmm. what that was. So all I know is I woke up one day and there was something in my underwear and I ain't know. And what how was old were you on. at this time? Um, I'm going to say I was in between that nine and a half, that 10 type of period okay. right there. Okay. Um, so I went to went to the school and we were I was in it. I had a bunch of tissue because I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. And um, it had went through my clothing and I went in the office and that was the very first time I ever. That's how I learned about what a period was mm -hmm. and a pad. But I was very heavy, 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 heavy bleeding. Right. And I ended up having um, to go to the hospital. And that's when from an examination. They found out that you Correct. were being molested. So um, they were going to take, they um, took us. When they went, that's when my father fled. And um, Because you told them Correct. that. But let me ask you, so your brothers and sisters, are they also your father's children? They're his only children. Okay, yeah. I just wanted to make sure it was yes. the same father. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. And then, um, so immediately, because we were four African-American children over in another country, my mom was in prison over in the States. He had left, had fled because of, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They, we had no, they couldn't tell if we were citizens. We had no paperwork. 
We had nothing. Mm-hmm. So we were put in what's called the Jugendamt, which mm-hmm. is a German orphanage. Mm. And um, there is a video that was just shown by uh, Melvin Farmer where he in- he interviewed the lady who took us in, wow. who was stationed there with the military. She's an American woman? She's American, and okay. her and her husband were stationed there. They didn't know us from Adam. Mm-hmm. But when they heard about our story, they stepped right in. They were there, and they took us in. They were influential in finding my mother. Mm. Um, that's how we got back to the States. Mm. So when we got back to the States, we got back here. And um, at that time, because of that, we were placed back into the system. Mm. Um, So at this time, my sister was um, in a placement. My brothers um, had did some things overseas that they had to go to Maryland. We were split up. Um, We were in the system um, for some time, but it was still abuse in the system. In, In group homes here in the U.S., Everything isn't great. You Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? There are people there that's supposed to be doing right by you, but they're talking about you. They're they're calling you names. They're abusing you. They're doing those things. So for me, um, I ran away. They were just in it. They're just in it for the money. Correct. So I hadn't been to school since the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Um, I returned to the streets. I reunited with my brothers. And, and I, your sister? And my sister was not with me at the okay. time. She mm-hmm. was in a placement, and I thought she was good. So I felt like I was better off on the street. Mm. And you were on the street at how old now? At 13 and a half. 13 I want to go half. back a little bit just mm-hmm. to the fact of your mom, when she got that, two, when y'all, after seeing her two years that she had, she had gotten the sentence, when did you guys hear about her sentence of 45 years? When my mom, when they had reached out and she um, got, it was a phone call over the phone. And um, that was the first time my mom had, was able to speak to us. And that's when I found out that my mom, um, her sentence was she was sentenced to capital murder. And she had life without the possibility of parole. Did she kill the guy that had molested you? My mm-hmm. mom, she, she killed um, the man, that was the man who had molested. However, he was also her pimp. They had mm-hmm. went to a party, and he was a type of person. Supposedly, now I know from what was told, there was an incident that happened. He got in an argument with my mom. He was throwing up a lot of stuff that hurtful things or whatever. I, only thing I know is that my mom, from what she told, she blacked out, but he was shot six times above the waist. Mm. And so my mom was sentenced to charge of capital murder and sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Wow. And how old was she? Is she is she still alive now? My mother? Yeah. No. When how long ago did she pass away? Two years ago. And she passed within the confine in mm-hmm. Wow. Uh um, go ahead. So um were you ever okay because i know you said you were living with your grandma for a little bit and um but you know how the reason why your mom or your parents are the way how they are is because of situations that they've been in Mm -hmm. when they were younger do you know if she was ever abused as a child um and her mom knew about it and she it was the same exact way of how she treated you she treated how did you find out about that my mother she told you yes my mother um from her own admission my mom was um, she was the only girl. She had two brothers. Mm-hmm. And my grandmother had, she was married to my grandfather. However, my grandmother had a relationship outside of my grandfather. Mm-hmm. And that man um, molested my mother. Mm-hmm. And my mother told my grandmother. My grandmother didn't believe my mother. And um, as a result of that, she was never treated the same. Um, my mom had several attempts of suicide throughout her life. She was also um, put into a Baker Act facility. Um, so she suffered a lot um, within her time. So that's why I always say my mom couldn't give something that she never had. Right. And you know? growing up, I know how the devil can play tricks on us in a lot of different ways. And you, you, when you tell me that your father had mental illness and then your mom had, you know, mental illness. Growing up as a kid, did you ever be like, well, both my parents crazy, so I'm crazy too. I crazy too. Right. I really did. I really, I, I thought like, because first of all, you don't, you don't, in, in our, for us as black, being black, you don't know about this type of stuff, number one. Mm-hmm. And then it's not like you hear about being black. We don't go talk to therapists. That's, that's not what we do. You know right. what I'm saying? So, for me, going through everything and 
it wasn't until when I had, I've had attempts. I had 16 attempts of suicide on my own life. Wow, man. I tried to, I, I used to get mad because I couldn't do that right. You know what I mean? So I had been Baker racked and things, and I thought I was waiting to hear the big, you know, diagnosis of being bipolar or schizophrenic. However, when I was diagnosed, I've been diagnosed with PTSD since I was nine years old. Mm -hmm. How old were you when you started trying to take your life? I had been trying to take my life ever since I was like 11. Mm. Wow. And so I was a cutter. Wow. I went from a cutter to pills. Um, I've thrown myself out of a car before. Um, so what, yeah, and not realizing wait, 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 God wait. had a plan for yeah, you. Yeah, you threw yourself out of a car before. Yes, detail that for me. Like, where, where were you at, and how old were you? I didn't want to. I didn't want to go back. I didn't want to go back to foster I get, care. To, to I didn't want to go back. So while they were driving, I opened up the door and I. How old were you? I was um, at that time. I was. Like right, right about about thirteen. I was still thirteen okay. what, before you yeah. left and went mm -hmm. on your own. So when you were thirteen and you threw yourself out of the car, did mm -hmm. you have any bruises or any? Yeah, I was cut up really bad. I had cut my. I have a permanent scar yeah. right here mm -hmm. on my yeah. arm, and I have a butt like. Well, thanks to my sis, it's makeup. But I have a <laughs> before it was cool to put the slashes in your eyebrows. Uh -huh. I have a permanent one from busting my eye. Wow, and stuff from that. So you just just been through so much, like so. When you when you think about it, like man, how many foster, how many times did you find yourself going back to a foster care and trying to figure it out? Like how many times did they catch you and try to do that to you? I think I I, I always lose. I'm, I'm gonna say I probably was in probably maybe twelve or thirteen different placements, and then like for group home maybe seven or eight, and I was considered an at risk one because I was real runaway. Cause I was a runaway, runaway and I was a fighter. So, I was real angry. Oh, you so tried to fight? You tried to oh, yeah, I was a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> so there was none I of them. I can't blame you, baby, mm -hmm. with everything you went through. So none of them was a place where it was good? I won't say that. I, I, get, I, I owe who I am today to one. Okay. And I'm going to say that. And because she taught me one valuable lesson. She was the one person who put in my hand a mustard seed. Mm. And she told me, she told me my life wasn't going to be easy, but she told me if I could believe that much... If I could believe this much and have faith that anything would be possible. And she taught me how to pray. And even though I didn't realize how much that, that would help me then, mm -hmm. that's what has helped me today and has continued to help me. What's her name? Shawan Miller. Shawan Miller. She, and where was she from? Baltimore, Maryland. So Shawan Miller in Baltimore, Maryland, man. Kudos to you, man. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she's still alive. Yes. And was wow. that the last um, foster, foster care girl. that you were in? That's the only one I cause I don't even consider that her foster care. I consider her my mom. Okay. No matter what. And how old were you when you were with her? With her, I got her when I was I was there when I was maybe like um, 10, 11 years old. And then, but you ran away from that yeah. one. So all the, because you didn't understand at mm -mm. that time. I, when you so used to taking care of yourself and doing for yourself. It was hard for me to accept like any kind of structure except love, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm, it does. I just wanted it for my sister. I didn't care about me. I wanted my sister to have a better life. So you when they when you run away from a foster care, they automatically take you to another one or do they try to take you back to that one? They try to take you, you go back to a group home until okay. you get another placement. But after a while, if you keep on deemed during the same behavior, you'll get labeled and you won't get a chance to get placed in a place. Then where did it put you at that you point? You get stuck at a group home. At a group home. Which is like a prison. So then you ran away at 13 and after mm -hmm. at 13 when you ran away, you never went back to mm -hmm. any of them. Mm -mm. And they don't come searching for you, or you just was they on a high. They probably did, but I jumped. The I, I wasn't no longer where they could find me. I went to Texas. Okay, and when you went to Texas, when you got here, I gotta ask you this: At thirteen, fourteen, did you end up starting to sell your body? Never did I have to sell my body. You basically knew. Did you run into the right people to keep you from that? I ran into the gang. Oh, you was a, oh, you was a, a, a that's <laughs> why you got the blue on. That's <laughs> why you were in the blue. Oh, because you looking. No, oh, it's not. Oh, <laughs> hell, it came out now. So you cripping. I was not, <laughs> I was never cripping. I joined was, what, the Gangster Disciples. Okay, you, okay, the Gangster Disciples. In Texas? No, they were from Illinois. 
Oh, okay. Chicago. So but you know joined it before you came to Texas. Way before I came to oh, Texas. Okay. Yeah. But you but you started to connect back with them. Correct. Is what you're saying. Correct. To your original roots of yes. being connected to them. Okay. And 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 I get that you was on the south side. You mm -hmm. connected to the GDs. Okay. Mm -hmm. What um, okay. When you came to Texas, did you connect with some of those? Yes. And 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 how was that? How was it dealing with that? Did you guys get into any criminalistic activity? Oh, yeah. What 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 was y'all doing? So for me, because I had a whole lot of anger, you know what I'm saying? A whole lot of anger. And for me, because people had took from me my innocence for so long, I didn't want that. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to be respected. I wanted to be, you know what I'm saying? To have that power. So I wanted to get in the right way. You know what I'm saying? I fought my way in. You know what I'm saying? I was a runner. I was, you know, driving people to pick up. I was beating people up. I was going to people's houses. I was doing a whole bunch of stuff. That I wasn't proud of. Did you end up in jail or anything? I got blessed. I could have went to jail. and um, But the only reason why I didn't is because um, my brothers cared enough not to put my name into something. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, my brothers, um, they, they both got incarcerated at very early ages. Um, my brother's first sentence was they um, armed robbery of three stores. So they were here in Texas with you? They were from Texas to Maryland. Oh, so that's we, how we you ended, ended up, up in Maryland. That's what I was wondering. Correct, we when you were 13 Texas to Maryland. Because when you were 13 and you left to come to mm -hmm. Texas, I'm like, how does a 13 year old get money to jump on a bus to mm -hmm. come to Texas? So you had to be with your we brothers older, whenever. We, yeah, and then I ended up in okay. Aberdeen, Maryland. Um, which is where it all started. So I really started. And then it was just a whole bunch of activity out there, gang related. That's all we knew. And for me, it was a family. You know what I'm saying? I had protection. I didn't have to worry about molestation. Mol I didn't have to worry about none of that. All I had to worry, I did, I did, I did, I had respect. You know what I'm saying? And for the first time in my life, I didn't have to look over my shoulder like that. I felt like I was untouchable mm. until um, like I said, when my brother, when my brothers got their charges, you know, my brothers are serving, my one brother serving 44 years. So that's he's a younger brother. Mm -hmm. And that's a younger brother. Mm -hmm. Is he? How old was he when this <laughs> happened? My brother been in and out of prison since he was 15, it's in and out of juvie since he was 14, 15 years old. Wow. And he's, where is he? What, he in Maryland? Maryland. And, mm -hmm. and, how, and he's not ever getting out? No. Wow. Um, yeah. yeah, I have to get his information. I want to write him. I always yes. write prison. And that's for robbery? Oh, no. Oh, well, that was his first charges. So what is this charge murder. that he's murdered? Mm -hmm. Just like his mom. Yes. So you see the cycle? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So what about the other brother? My other brother, was it was drugs-related robbery. He ended up getting out and then going back in. Um, however, um, I lost that brother um, last year. He, in prison? Mm hmm So he, he, did he get killed in prison? He got to self. Oh, he killed himself. Yes. Mm, How he hard was that no for you more. when you heard about that? It was really hard for the simple fact. Um, I never really was able to be a sister. You know what I'm wow. saying? Why do you feel like you was never able to be a sister? Because from as early as I can remember, I was put in a situation where I had to be a mom. You know mm. what I mean? Even when I didn't want to, like I, I, I had to be the one to take care of, to make sure they was okay, you know, to try my best to prevent them from having to hurt. You get what I'm do saying? You, do you blame yourself for your yeah. brother's uh, issue? Mm -hmm. How hard is that for you? It's real hard. Because if you think about it, your brother, and, and, and you give us some tissue. Yeah, help make sure you keep us straight. Hold on, we'll take a second. Sorry. No, you That's fine. okay. You got it. You're going to be all right. This happened, we know this happens when you talk about certain, mm -hmm. but it, it, it heals. It heals so many people because somebody else out there going through something that you're going through right now. Yes, ma'am. And, and, and just, to, to, I just want to tell you that it, it's not your fault. Yeah. It's not your fault. And, and, and to be honest with you, that you've been through so much. You, you, it, because forgiveness is something else you have to to forgive yourself because a lot of times we we get so caught up on forgiving others that we don't think about ourselves the most important thing is that you forgive yourself because you've been through so much and there's so much retention held because of the fact of not being able to 
be there for them and you weren't able to be a little girl either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say you weren't able to be a sister, you weren't able to be a little girl. Mm -hmm. And so that's the that's the part that's so devastating, man, that all that was taken away from you. But at the end of the day, you still here. Yes. You ain't supposed to be here. You supposed to be dead according yeah. to the devil. He wanted to take you out. And your brothers and sisters and, and for them to either make it this far. Yes. And still be alive. They y'all did something that's so extraordinary, man, to even make it through for this day. And then he, for him to take himself out when he did, look how long he struggled with that. Yeah. You know, look look at your other brother. He's still, I guarantee you, going through it right to this day. Yeah, he is. And you know, and, and that's why I say I wanted to write him. I wrote the other one too. Okay. Because I've been through stuff and I feel like just to get a letter and just to write and yeah. tell somebody you love them and hey man, you can make it. And I heard your story and it blew me away. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So you guys are extraordinary, man. I just want to tell you, man, you are a blessing to us. Thank you. To be able to come on here and be strong enough to even talk about what you're talking about. So I just want to say thank you again, man. And and I'm gonna go back into the story. But, can, but even like um when you say er, when you said earlier when we first started that you know, it's choices. It's our choices. Life is full of choices. No matter what situation you've been in, you can't blame yourself for somebody else's choices. Yes. Because just like the molestation that you've been through, I've heard kids who are now adults who went through what you went through and blame themselves for getting molested. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're a child. How you can blame yourself for a grown person doing something evil to you? Yes. But you have people who do blame themselves for that because yeah. of whether their parents tell them it's your fault because you wearing this because it's your fault because you mm -hmm. talking smiling at him because it's your fault because you doing this but it's not their fault you understand what I mean yes. so it's the same thing with your brother you know he had choices and you can't be there for as much as people with big hearts want to be there for everybody want to be that person but you can't be there for everybody yes you and know to what go I mean? back into that hurt like to talk about it and you still have issues because it's, it's not easy and, and, and you know that hurt is still there. You know that unforgiveness is still there. Mm -hmm. In some kind of way, you got to lock in the fact that when, when, with, with God, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. yes. And then you got to lock into the fact that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That scripture right there in uh, 2 Corinthians, that 5 and 17 through 19, it done it for me. Yes. I went through things myself, not as dramatic as yours, but it was some things I went through of seeing my father uh, get shot at by my mama, father being shot in the head, uh, me going through things, crisis situation, drug from house to house. But at some point I hit a spot where I said I can be a new creature. Yes. I, you mean I get to start over again? Yeah. And that was what was the clicking point for me. Absolutely. Is that I could forgive myself as far as the East is from the West. And that's what made me to push on. And I would suggest strongly that you keep tapping into your word. Okay. God can change any circumstance, any situation, if you believe in that grain of a mustard seed that she told you about. I told my children about mm -hmm. that last night at midnight. Yes. I was reading the word with my kids last. That's why you will never understand the relationship between me and my wife. Because at midnight last night, I brought her and the kids in the living room and said, let's read together. Yeah. Let's pray together because we know that things can happen. Yes. But you'll never, devil, get to take that part away from what we done That's last right. night. And you'll never be able to take what you're dealing with today here on Boss Talk 101. Yes. The day, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And you can call me a preacher. I know y'all say I'm preacher <laughs> or whatever. I don't care because God been too good too to me. Yes. To, where I, to see this young lady sitting in front of us, to see what she experienced, you guys are cream puffs if you run around here feeling pity for yourself. For, for what this woman has dealt with and to see her sitting here, we're not even getting into the point of this woman is blind. Yes. So now we're about to now born born blind. Born yeah. blind. We're about to go into that part of the story. So this is the, this is the part where you don't understand, man, what God can do, but God is very powerful. And Amen. you got to forgive yourself because there are so many people that you're touching and healing. You guys just was in from North Carolina to Florida to wherever you guys yes. were. You guys are working. And, 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 and that's the part that people don't understand when it comes to Melvin Farmer 
and a Tola Marv and the calls we get and the things that they're trying to do to try to help to situate things out there with different groups of people working with people like yourself. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And, 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 and you guys are, what's the name of the, the, the Incredible organization? Incredible Messengers. Incredible Messengers. Incredible message. He called me about that all the time. And people get on here and they'll see him, and I'm gonna sidestep for a second, and they'll say, "That old man, why you dealing with them old gang banging niggas? And why you why you let them gang bangers come on your show? What about this part? What about I told Marvin? What about Melvin them sending this woman, who been through hell and high water, and who who pretty much been going around traveling with them, trying to help people? What about that part?" So I say to that, whoever the critics may be, man, tap into what's real with these guys. Yeah, they started to trade against the Crip, and yeah, he was the oldest Pyru, or uh, Tola Marv was, but at the end of the day, what about the change? Yeah. What about the people that they're helping and inspiring? Yeah. That's what Boss Talk 101 is, is t tapping into, and if you are not tapping into that, then turn the damn page. Get off this page, because we're going to try to help somebody. That's right. Man, now let's get back into yeah. it, man. Because I done ran it on them right quick. <laughs> so so I ran point, on them. You in Maryland right now, right? Correct. That's where we at. Yes. So with all that's going on in Maryland, when did the car accident happen before you had to go to, because I know the car accident happened before you went to Florida, right? Mm hmm Okay, so, so it happened in Maryland? No, it, no, no, no. It happened okay. in, no. I ended up going back from after the things happened with my brother. In Maryland. In okay. Maryland, and he got his last, there was a hit put out on me because mm. I was the only, I guess you could say family member that was able to be gotten to because of the life that my brother took. How old were you when this hit was put out on you? Um, Jesus Christ. I don't even remember. <laughs> to be honest. Um, well, between between the, the ages of 15. To, yeah, between then, like 15, 17, 17. between some yeah. time. Okay. Yeah. So I ended up leaving for the safety and that's when I went back to Texas to my sister at the time was she had that's how she ended up going back to Sh she ended up with Shawan um, which was the lady that I told you about mm -hmm. so because she was in a situation and where Shawan is in Chicago no she was in Texas in by Texas this time. Shawan yes, okay that's where it is okay. yes so basically they ended up taking her because some things were happening to her mm. and it says so they took her so that's why um, I ended up going back to Texas. And remember, I hadn't been in school or anything. I mm -hmm. was just, you know, whatever. So that's when I decided I needed to get myself together. And this is when you got emancipated? Or? Correct. Okay. And the heat yes. is still out on Correct. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up testing, taking a test, getting back into school, um, graduated. I ended up graduating at 17. Mm -hmm. hey. um, um, Joseph, which was Shawan's husband, he was in the army. Mm. And um, he um, instilled to be like, you know, that type of discipline that came into that and the benefits of the military and things like that. And I didn't come from money or nothing like that, but I wanted to be, that's when I wanted to be somebody that I guess for more, I wanted to be somebody my sister can look up to, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that's when I made that decision to go in and I began to break a different cycle. Cause that's the only person you had out because that's your it. brothers were already gone. So it was I only you nobody, and your sister. Me and my sister. Okay. And um, I became the first one to graduate high school, mm -hmm. going to college. Man. and. And, Thank God for that. <laughs> and break that whole cycle. How did that make you feel? That made me feel good. It made you feel good, didn't it? It did. Even though there was nobody in the in the audience cheering for me, Man. there was nobody there to greet me with no, you know, it was graduation time. I didn't have no party. I didn't have no card. I didn't even have nobody to walk off the stage and hug me. But I graduated. Hey, how, Amen. How much younger is your sister than you? My my sister is six, five. Wait. Five years younger than I am. Four Five. years younger than I am. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. So it wasn't, it wasn't the typical whatever. But I graduated. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And um, I always had a heart to help people. You know what I'm saying. So I wanted. To, I became a nurse. Mm -hmm. I was doing great. I was still in Texas. All that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I was working in the hospital in the emergency department. And um. Like any other day, you know what I'm saying? I wow. worked from seven at night to seven in the morning. 
I was in school. My my goal was to be a nurse practitioner. Mm. Um, I wanted to have my own office. Um, I had got my back. I got my master's. I was on my way. So you, at this point, you only got one master's at this time. Cause Correct. Because right now you you got ooh too many a masters right now. <laughs> yes. You are overachiever. Yes. Um, but my sister, she was doing good. She followed in my footsteps. My sister had a little girl. Mm. Um, I had become a mom. How old were you son. when you became a mom? What? I, yes, I had my son. Well, all right, when I was now. 24. I had my 24? little 24? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we became the family that we made for ourselves. Right. You know what I'm saying? This is good. And we, and we was good. We, 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 we started it and we were on our way. You know what I mean? Um, however, um, my life took another challenge. I was leaving work um, like any other day. And... Um, we were uh, we were all in the car headed out. You know, this what I'm is saying? you, your sister, and yes, and I got my niece. Your niece. Um, she was at an overnight daycare. Mm-hmm. How old was she? My niece. Mm-hmm. She was only about seven and a half, eight months at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, on the road, you know, going home. And only thing I could tell you is I always tell people we're talking about pancakes. <laughs> yeah, that's the last thing I remember. And um. And then I, um, the the next time I remember, I woke up and it was just black, and um, I couldn't move, and um, I remember the voice telling me, um, "Miss Johnson, Miss Johnson," I couldn't respond, and um, I was basically told that I was in a tragic car accident, and as a result of that car accident. Um, I lost my sister, I lost my niece, and I lost my sight.